the Wake Up and Live with the Art Show, the performing and cultural arts program which celebrates and showcases the diversity of the arts and performing artists in Northeast Ohio. are delighted to have this very special edition of Wake Up and Live with the Arts. I'm Sue Johnson and I just found out that our guest is the very shy CEO of the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland and we are especially honored that he agreed to sit with us and chat for a few minutes about what the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland is all about because he says he doesn't do many interviews so it'll be our small role to help more of the Greater Cleveland and Northeast Ohio community learn about the United Black Fund. Having said that, let me welcome you, Cecil Lipscomb. It is so nice to meet you. It's and a pleasure. You are CEO of the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland. Executive Director. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank okay. you so much. Is there anybody, is, do you have a boss then? My boss is the volunteer board. Uh, Okay. And Don Graves from Buckley King Law Firm is mm -hmm. the uh, chair of our board. Okay. Uh, but we have about a 20 member board currently. Okay. And uh, filling some new seats this fall. I see. So uh, we look forward to uh, finding some uh, key leadership uh, that's interesting, interested in uh, improving our community uh, mm -hmm. to come and join us in this effort. Sounds good. Thank now, how long have you been in this position of executive director? Uh, right now, uh, I would say nine months. Nine months. And the gestation uh, period. Yes, you yes. birthed this baby. <laughs> yeah, nine months, and yeah. a lot has gone on. It's felt, okay. felt longer. Uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, organization. Uh, yes. uh, to be honest with you, we have been uh, in the midst of a transition, an evolution mm -hmm. sure. uh, from a great foundation. Uh, we have uh, been under the leadership of Ruby Terry, for yes, she was a number your former, of many years. Yes. She was our executive director mm -hmm. and, and president, uh, at, you know, for for a number of years, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, a long history of tradition uh, with our founders going all the way back to uh, Judge White, uh, who established George White. Absolutely. Oh my, yes. Okay. Yeah, he established our organization back in the early '80s mm -hmm. uh, when he was appointed to the bench. So I feel honored to be able to sit in the seat. Uh, to uh, do some of the great work that, that our organization and continue some of the great work that our organization has hit legacy Plus, up. bring up some new work. Or, you know. Oh, for sure. We, you know, when I, when I say build on the foundation. The legacy. Uh, and the legacy is yeah. truly a building because things don't, th don't stay the same from day to day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if an organization doesn't evolve, doesn't transition into new levels and new heights, um, it's hard to keep up with the change in the greater community. Oh, uh, yes. We are faced with very new challenges, very different challenges, um, but some of them have a, a historical impact uh, on our community in particular, in the African American community. And what are some examples of those challenges, that the way the world has changed yeah, that you well, would have to address? I, I mean, without going into uh, too, 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 much too, too, yeah. too philosophical thought, but uh -huh. if you look at the, the, the transition and just in our families mm -hmm. uh, throughout uh, you know, from the 60s, 70s on to, to currently um, what we're experiencing with single parent homes uh, and the challenges that come with raising children on a single in, uh, income. Uh, these, are, these are new uh, challenges in the last 15 to 20 years mm -hmm. that are, uh, don't seem to be slowing down. No, they're increasing. I work with Fatherhood Initiative as well. You mm -hmm. may know that from the Absolutely. proposal because I have to put in the plug for you yes. and the fact that uh, we are so honored that not only is Cecil sitting down with us, but we have been granted United Black funding. I think this is actually our fourth time yes, around, I, I think. Yeah. So we, we know the work, and I'm going to have him elaborate on some of the work that he does. But, and then we'll talk about uh, what we do with our A New You for a New Life program, which United Black Fund has gracious, graciously funded. So tell us a little bit, and talk about single families, parenting. Yeah. Yes. Okay, this is the kind of program that we could acknowledge that we had to stop tape for a minute to make some camera adjustments. Well, you know, there's always lighting and sound issues. Understood. And we left off when we were talking about some of the more current social issues and community right. issues with single parent families, um, mm -hmm. the economics. Now we've got blended families. We've got step we got all kinds of folks right. that are 
and gay families now mm -hmm. are finally, right. well, they still got a battle because every group and culture has had to fight to be accepted and That's have right. the same equal rights. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of issues that yeah. an organization like yours uh, has to, you know, confront, acknowledge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we uh, at the end of the day, we have the wonderful position in our community to not live in a bucket. Mm -hmm. we, we don't operate in a silo. Uh, we, we cover the range of a many, many issues, uh, mm -hmm. trying to kind of weave and strengthen that safety net. Right. Um, you know, programs that I see uh, range anywhere from senior assisted living. Uh, we provide grants to organizations providing wonderful services there. Uh, we uh, go to child care and daycare, mm -hmm. which, you know, as a, as, a, as a parent, those types of programs at an economical or, or inexpensive rate uh, is kind of an oxymoron. There's no such thing as an inexpensive rate anymore. Absolutely. <laughs> with, with certain daycares yeah. out there, if, if parents in need uh, seek and uh, look for aftercare programs and, and before school care programs, mm -hmm. they're out there. Yeah. And so what we want to do for those few that do exist, mm -hmm. we want to strengthen those uh, to uh, make sure that they provide before affordable, um, excellent Care. Safe care. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. To the children in need. Um, we, we mentioned uh, kind of off camera talking about the arts. Uh, many children need exposure to an outlet mm -hmm. uh, and to, to kind of groom a talent or a gift that they have. Uh, but, but, you know, and, and going back a little bit about issues facing us today, this economy uh, that just didn't start recently, I, I'll just add that over the last uh, six or seven years, mm -hmm. uh, has, has kind of buckled many families um, okay. and uh, our city uh, has felt an impact on, on, a, on a variety of levels and so when it comes down to providing opportunities for people to seek assistance mm -hmm. that's that's a critical piece for us you know just to put food on the table yes you know various uh, hunger programs absolutely food serving programs. yes and yeah. and what I'd like to uh, to to help greater Cleveland know is that we're just not getting started at this. We mm -hmm. funded, I think, 78 organizations last year. Yes. Uh, Which it was such a privilege. I know the economy, it, I know, you yeah, know what it's, it's like. It's our pleasure to be able to fund a mm -hmm. program uh, like yours, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, Sue. Uh, we, we don't uh, have any other reason, any other purpose in existing mm -hmm. other than to support nonprofit organizations. Right. Strengthen nonprofit organizations, deserving nonprofit organizations that make a difference in our community. One uh, one particular program put on by Kenyon College uh, recently, they are um, uh, providing uh, a kind of an oral history for African Americans mm. in uh, our greater public school system here. Wow! So we have African American education programs going on in school and, and, and throughout the black community we always say, well, we weren't taught our history in schools. Well, we have a direct impact now where young minority kids can tell their story, can understand oh, their story. how exciting. You know, these types of things will uh, kind of increase the awareness, mm -hmm. uh, uh, self-awareness that we need to have a bit of uh, in, in, uh, improved self-esteem. Well, we get uh, that through, if I can interrupt, with our yes. portion of our A New Youth for a New Life mm -hmm. program, where we didn't start out with youth and at-risk teens, but we've ended up with youth and at-risk teens. Yes. And a big part of that component is about working with their self-image, leadership development yes. skills, how to be, um, you know, somebody contributing to the community at That's some right. point. Yeah, so, That's right. uh, and Cle like you say, Cleveland needs so much of everything. Absolutely. <laughs> it Absolutely. really does. But yeah. you know what, it's a city that, um, you know, uh, when you look at our history, we are a philanthropic town. Oh, always. Those who mm -hmm. uh, have and those who uh, know how to get Yes. They go out and provide support. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I, I've had the fortunate opportunity of living in a couple of different cities uh, throughout my professional life, and I've never seen such a philanthropic town. Well, um, that's one of the, of the good things about Cleveland. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so when we go out and talk to some of our funders uh, about the work that we are trying to accomplish here in the community, we don't get a closed door. Mm -hmm. You know, we are fortunate that we have some long-lasting relationships with many of the banks here in town, right. uh, local organizations that um, just just understand mm -hmm. the need. They get it, and uh, we we actually uh, are fortunate to be able to then just 
uh, turn around and put that those funds and that support to good use. And back into the community. Absolutely. To put it to work. Because you hit on a key factor, which is, I'm just going to um, pontificate about our country for a moment. Mm -hmm. And that is, and it's no secret, I mean, I felt this way and everybody agrees, very few say it, but our country, love it and all that, but our government is so focused on war and kill people and anything that would it elevate our aesthetic uh, status as a culture, that's the first step they kill. Look at what happens with education. Mm -hmm. They don't want to put dollars in that when they can put dollars in guns. Now I'm overgeneralizing, true. Yeah. But they don't. The, what do they do? Take away arts and culture from the schools. Mm -hmm. What do they do? Take away the teachers that are needed to work with all these new issues that you know the world is facing. So, if I run the United States one day, <laughs> <laughs> there will be no more guns manufactured. I know Absolutely. why we need them, you know, to build the economy. <laughs> but no, but we're going to become educated where we don't need the guns yeah, anymore. Absolutely. So, yeah, that, well, that's just a Sue that. Johnson no, philosophy. No, no, no. I, yeah. I appreciate your commentary. I, yeah. I just, I, I feel like with the education reform that we could potentially be seeing, mm -hmm. I, you know, my daughter and uh, stepson's actually gone to. Uh, schools here, charter schools right here oh, in the city. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're familiar with E-Prep, Village Prep. I've heard um, of them. They mm -hmm. are, um, you know, on a whole nother standard mm -hmm. for children. And, and so the bar is not lower. The children are raised up to the expectation that we all have for yes. them because they're intelligent, bright uh, folks. And uh, what we saw and what I see mm -hmm. is that children are doing some amazing things. They're, when you look at state standard testing, yes. uh, they're coming from the same neighborhoods as other kids right and they're excelling so it's my position it's our position to support programs that pro provide results you know measurable impact is what a lot of nonprofits are, are, are looking at a lot of funders like uh, looking, us yes. we're looking at how can we measure the outcomes of the impact mm -hmm. and when you see a child it's very simple that was getting a D and now it's getting an A that's you can it. measure that. Yes. You, you can, can look that. at yeah. that child and say, okay, they're, they're progressing to the direction that we go. You know, how does the home look? You know, mm. how is the family? You know, can we strengthen that family? So we can, you know, when I, I actually took on this role, um, you know, I had to go through a lot of questions and in interview process as the board of directors really cares about who sits in this position. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I kind of likened our community to a newborn baby. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very fragile, you know. But with the right nurturing, with the right care, we can we can grow that community into a healthy, strong, let's say, body. And I love your optimism, and I love your seeing the possibilities, mm -hmm. and not belaboring that which is wrong, mm -hmm. but seeing how we can go from here. Absolutely. Now, you, uh, of course, when you got this position, you came from somewhere. Whence, <laughs> whence cometh thou? <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm a fundraiser, uh, mm -hmm. so I, I had about five years at the Cleveland Clinic. I was fortunate to be able to uh, be involved with the uh, Major Gifts program there, mm -hmm. launching the Heart Center campaign uh, mm -hmm. with a whole team of folks over there. So uh, that was uh, kind of my, my transition. Um, prior to that, I worked uh, at Case Western Reserve University as mm -hmm. a fundraiser. So th mm -hmm. those two so entities were, yeah. was my, in, my they were my intro into the nonprofit sector. You mm -hmm. know, I'm kind of working my way to the front lines. You know, okay. it's, it's uh, those are the big big guns in, mm -hmm. in town, and, and it was a wonderful training ground for me to understand how um, sophisticated philanthropists uh, make an impact on society and our world. Mm -hmm. And so I, what I thought was wow, we need, to, we need to understand how to do that as a community. As African Americans and minorities throughout Greater Cleveland, how do you um, take your passion, your heart's desire to make a difference and not just talk about it, uh, but put money where your mouth is, mm -hmm. action where your mouth is, and, and get behind a cause. And um, from this position, I'm able to influence people to do just that. Uh, prior to, prior to uh, my, my nonprofit, Arena. I spent about 12 years uh, in the telecommunications sector, mm -hmm. uh, working with uh, companies like what we know to be involved into Verizon. Oh, so, okay. So yes. yeah. So I'm a corporate guy turned uh, turned turn, turn non nonprofit. Yeah. yeah. And the, I'm sure, even with a nonprofit, I tell my group at the Wake Up and Lives After Studio, I spend my time trying to run our nonprofit 
organization, like a for-profit business. You know, That's pay right. attention to those details that afford, you know, bottom lines, income, expenses, delegate, you know, the whole nine yards. So in a way, a lot of it is very similar in terms of organizational development. And I'm sure you're, now that you're in this side, as they say, well, you've been in this side for several years, yes. but I'm still tickled over Cleveland Clinic is still listed as a non-profit. It's a non-profit. Now, now it, it cracks up. <laughs> you know, there isn't anybody on this planet who believes. That is so funny. But no, I, I, pre I appreciate it. But you know, um, I call, I joke with my accountant, and my finance mm -hmm. guy here. I say, this is little Walmart. Okay. You know, we, we, try to, we try to get everything at a high quality, uh -huh. low price, you yes. know, for, with what we purchase, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and uh, the highest quality possible um, when it comes down to just buying ink pens. Right. Um, you know, that's something that I was just, I, I'll say from a corporate sense, sense mm -hmm. uh, I was raised with um, trying to do things in a, in a logical way that makes good sense. If it doesn't make good business sense, mm -hmm. chances are it, it won't do well for the long haul. You well, know. ask me how I know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, we want sustainable uh, impact. We don't mm -hmm. want uh, to make a difference tomorrow and then the next day mm -hmm. not and have to figure out which way to go. Uh, we want this organization, which is, you know, some 30, 32 odd years old now, mm -hmm. to be around into perpetuity. Right. You know, through three, four more generations can sit back and say, okay, this is a healthy organization that is not just doing $10,000 grants, because I, I, that's where we are now. We provide uh, grants up to about $10,000. Okay. I call yeah. them micro grants. Mm -hmm. But how do, we, how do we improve to make them, uh, uh, the organization stronger? $10,000 didn't, didn't have as much impact um, to yesterday as it did 30 years ago. Of course, of okay, course. But yeah. what about 30 years from now? Mm -hmm. So, so we, ha we have to make some good business decisions mm -hmm. uh, to provide the strength necessary, or the, the stability yes. uh, mm -hmm. to uh, strengthen these organizations. Now you mentioned that you're, you, you, know, you started out in the for-profit sector. Uh, was your major, did you do college uh, as a business management major or political? What, were you, what was your yeah, major? So, so uh, my background, uh, undergrad, I was a uh, uh, business management. Uh, it, was, it was my undergrad at mm -hmm. Ursuline College. Believe okay. it or not, it's not a well, college only for women. Not anymore. For, for several yeah, years, for yes, a number of years, years now. Yeah. Um, uh, but I went on to Case Western, and I uh, got a graduate certificate in nonprofit management from okay. there. Uh, didn't stop there. Went on to Weatherhead School of Management sure. and got a uh, sure. uh, degree in my MBA. Uh, with a concentration in entrepreneurship and nonprofit. Oh yeah, that's what we're big on entrepreneurship through our Wake Up and Live Actors right. through, and many of the workshops that I do that aren't necessarily mm -hmm. uh, covered in the in the grant that we have. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the components about if you can't find a job, make your own business. I'm you tell you. Yeah. And there there needs to be a whole lot more of that going on. And I think yeah. in our culture, because I just. Um, what was I doing? I don't know, because I work with Upward Bound program yes. at Tri-C Metro, mm -hmm. dealing with the, um, you know, the teens there come, that come from, you know, Cleveland schools and we want to do the same things for them that you do through your, your kids at the charter schools. But the point is, in our culture, we have to help change the mentality of maybe the parents that it's about going out and getting a job rather than going out and creating a career and or create, using entrepreneurship as a way to be in control of your life, your finances and all. I mean, no, we know it's not easy. I teach whole workshops on that. <laughs> but still changing the, the mindset right. that there's not just one way to work. Oh, you know? oh yeah. I mean, but you, you know, somebody had to create that job. Yes, at that's some the point. whole point. Somebody but had to make that somebody share. Somebody had you know? to provide an opportunity yeah. for that job to exist. And mm -hmm. that whether that person is was uh, taught how to run a business earlier mm -hmm. in life or not, uh, eventually that person had to uh, take the risk of running their own business, yes. which hopefully evolved into a successful uh, business. And, and, and so with young people, I just encourage uh, folks to um, you know, get behind them if mm -hmm. they have a non-traditional idea. Yes, um, which the artist you know, is. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, just you know, just kind of let them uh, and uh, provide them the means to investigate. You know, mm -hmm. we, we don't do enough of that. You know, we think there's a cookie cutter process, but each child, you know, the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. Yes. Um, you know, and, and the bottom line is each child has their own way. And you if know. they would just follow their own passions, pursue yes. dreams, and have a dream. Because there's right. some children 
who don't have a dream. Yeah. So well, yeah. well, we we uh, we know that uh, in the right environment, and and I think you know when I say the right environment, as as good as it we can make it, you know, mm -hmm. given the uh, an imperfect world that we live in, mm -hmm. um, each person can reach their potential. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. that's what we want. We want every person to have a fair shot at reaching their potential. You are highly inspirational. <laughs> I, I love it. Thank I mean, that's my thing, you know, you. about being highly inspirational Thank you. and Thank operating you. on a higher level. That yeah. is so critical. Now, uh, before we're going to get your contact information so that if there's a nonprofit organization out there, and we do, United Black Fund uh, does fund nonprofit organizations. There are other foundations, funding groups that, you know, they, they have different kinds of folks and organizations that they will uh, look at funding. So for, what are some of the criteria? I know you've talked in yeah. general, but what's either some of the kinds of nonprofit groups? Um, mm -hmm. You know, our guidelines pays that if your nonprofit service falls under these guidelines or criteria, mm -hmm. so that when we when you get through talking about it, we can have folks, um, you know, contact you via phone, email, what yes. have you, website. Yes, we appreciate yeah. it. Um, again, it's the United Black Fund uh, of Greater Cleveland. Our mm -hmm. website is www.ubfogc.org, www.ubfogc.org. Um, and you'll find all of this information on our website. One thing that I'd like to note is that the nonprofit sector has a kind of a, a identification or tax code, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 501c3. C3, yeah. That 501c3 status uh, provides us the ability to fund uh, that, that type of organization. Those are tax exempt organizations uh, and churches fall into that category. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I understand uh, growing up in a black church myself um, that many of the services that are being provided in our community are connected to a church. Which is one of which our is strong... Which is our center point of mm -hmm. our community. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to strengthen that, you know. So we, we actually fund, believe it or not, we fund uh, a marriage ministry. At a local one of, I saw that. I, that yes. This is the second time I've been awarded a grant that the same people yes. and through their church. I think, weren't there two There's a couple groups? different. Yeah, yeah, it seemed to me yeah. there were two that yeah. do some kind of, you know, strengthening families, Absolutely. marriage counseling. So, so we, you know, so when I say... You, 501c3 status, a lot of people think mm -hmm. uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, YWCA, and these are all organizations that mm -hmm. we fund, yes. uh, Cleveland Hearing and Speech, mm -hmm. but we go beyond that and, uh, and go to what I would say is the grassroots level in the black community. Uh, and my, I just want to make it a point too that the services and the grants that um, we support uh, or provide um, it impacts poor people throughout Greater Cleveland. And I'll say, I'll say, um, economically challenged. Yes. Because um, many people in the suburbs, as we know, are struggling. Are now economically challenged. Struggling. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so our services uh, not only impact African Americans and other minorities, but economically disadvantaged people mm -hmm. as well. Yes. Okay. And so that's those are the types of nonprofit organizations that we seek um, and to support. Uh, when it comes down to children uh, and, and schools that uh, we had the shooting of a few months back yes. uh, here locally, one of our funding agencies, Beachbrook, had to send counselors Over there. to the site to provide the appropriate services mm -hmm. there. These are things that uh, you don't think about until boom, happens. tragedy happens. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's in my opinion that um, if anyone that has an existing nonprofit organization or is interested in partnering with a nonprofit organization, let us be that filter to kind of evaluate mm -hmm. and help you understand how you can make a difference in the community. UBF uh, has been around, we know quite a few. Like I said, we fund between 70 or 80 organizations annually over the last 30 years, so we've seen quite a few. Yes. Yeah. And um, tell us your philosophy about funding as it relates to collaborating when possible uh, with, you know organizations does mm -hmm. that help strengthen um, the perhaps the potential for being looked at more closely by the mm -hmm. funders uh, of course it brings greater benefit because you're hopefully impacting more people if you have a good collaboration going yeah, yeah. so so my our experience has been that it's kind of like if you look at the map of, um, of 
the city of Cleveland. You have churches on a lot of different corners. <laughs> have we you ever driven that. up and down Kinsman? Yes. <laughs> it's a bar, a church, <laughs> church bar, bar yeah. church. So, so, so the nonprofits are the same way. Yes. They're <laughs> they're nonprofits on every corner throughout Greater Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And, and and again, I'm I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Originally been here for a number of years now, so I know the city fairly well. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but anytime I can get like-minded organizations to partner for a similar effort cause, mm -hmm. I want to try to make that happen. A strategic alliance will strengthen uh, the impact. Right. Uh, I have people come up and say, "How do I start a nonprofit?" Well, what, you know, I tell them, "You know, let me give me your idea. Tell me what you're thinking about." Mm -hmm. And I'm and and nine times out of ten. I can name four or five other organizations that are currently doing those services. So, so our philosophy is partner when possible. When possible, yes. Partner when possible. Mm -hmm. uh, strategic alliances, they're always good. So, so for example, if you came to me and said, okay, I need $5,000 to start a summer program, and somebody else said, I need $5,000 to start a summer program, maybe I might have the incentive to collect, to do something together you all make that five thousand dollars turn into ten or twenty, mm -hmm. you know, and then the more impact that you'll be able to make. And now you um, you are accessible for folks to come in and talk to you, but tell tell the folks about your staff what oh, um, okay. what Celeste does and yeah. how she'll she'll talk to us too. Absolutely. And Nadra answers the phone. Of course, we know each other, you know, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I'm busy getting lost, <laughs> but tell us a little bit about your staff who who stand to serve um, mm -hmm. the you know a whole lot of people, community uh, grantees, and uh, when you have questions about submitting your proposal, all all of the above. Yeah. So the chances are when you call uh, our office, which is the uh, phone number, if you don't mind, I'll plug that. Yes, five uh, two one six five six six nine two six three. And this will all be on uh, crawl too oh, on wonderful, the screen. Wonderful. So that, when you call our office, you'll speak with Nadra Washington. She's our office manager. She'll direct you to the right person. Um, Celeste uh, Terry, who's Ruby Terry's daughter, yes. our executive director for many years, Celeste is in charge of our grants process. Mm -hmm. And she has been uh, a wonderful uh, addition to that program. She kind of, we transitioned after the passing, the loss of our, our former grants manager. And she oh, is, uh, yes. yes, and, yes. Uh, Never, oh, and yeah. uh, a surprising loss. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but she had, she had kind of built this uh, caring, uh, nurturing uh, relationship with many of our grantees. Mm -hmm. And Celeste has picked up right right on that. And so a lot of people come here uh, to just ask a question. You know, just come right. here. You know, we, we want a relationship year round, not when it's time to submit for a grant, but we want an ongoing relationship. So Celeste Terry is kind of uh, the person that you would speak to regarding that fact. Uh, we're also in the process of um, evaluating where the greatest needs are in our community. And, and so Goldie Alvis, uh, formerly of the uh, Cleveland Foundation, uh, is on board with us as a consultant right now, mm -hmm. uh, helping us to determine uh, truly where we will make the most impact uh, on the, the, uh, the, the most critical issues facing our community. So we have a, quite a few things going on uh, to, to kind of make a difference in our in our neighborhoods and our in our community. And you've been doing this for over thirty years and I would expect that the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland will be in business continuing to do great things on behalf of our community. And another thirty two, thirty five, a hundred years and That's Cecil right. will be around. <laughs> <laughs> and I want uh, on behalf of Lester Bryant, our videographer and our whole Wake Up and Live with the Arts team from the Actors Studio want to thank Cecil Lipscomb, now see I almost got through the whole show without <laughs> stuttering, Cecil Lipscomb, That's the Executive right. Director of the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland. We are so pleased and honored, and you know, I was almost going to end up in almost a southern draw because you're such a gentleman, That's right. you know, and That's you still right. have a From little Virginia. bit of that. Virginia flavor, <laughs> just a hint. <laughs> yeah, that's home, that's home. That's home. But thank yes. you so much for having me. Well, we're me glad you let us come in yeah. uh, and see the gang again and the new digs, which yes, are right. very impressive. And we want to thank you for joining us for this wonderful edition of Wake Up and Live with the Arts. And you can always reach us at the Wake Up and Lives Actors Studio, www.wakeupandlives.org, or certainly at Wake up 4664 at AOL.com. And we always end every show, no matter who we are talking with, that we encourage you to be sure and wake up and live with the arts every day. Thanks. See you soon.
okay, you thought we were gone for right now and that this was the end of the show. I'm admitting that I totally forgot some very important information with our guest this afternoon, Cecil Lipscomb, Executive Director of the United Black Fund. And one of the things we like to do with our guests on our show is help them get the word out about some of the special events that they're doing so that we as a community can su support the efforts. And I forgot the major thing that you're very proud of that you just completed yesterday, and uh -huh. that's the annual... Uh, the 20th annual uh, Celebrity Golf Outing. Okay. Uh, we had that uh, out at Stonewater Golf Club. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful, wonderful day of golf. And this is, again, 20 years we've been putting on this event mm -hmm. for our worthy cause uh, to support the uh, other agencies and uh, nonprofits in the community. Uh, we had, I want to say, 115 golfers. Wow. Uh, you know, some dinner guests. It was a, just a great day. We raised mm -hmm. uh, some wonderful gifts. Uh, we had the uh, Paul Warfield uh, come through. Uh, mm -hmm. All the, many Browns players. Browns uh, players, yeah. Uh, just it was it was just a great event. Reggie Rucker uh, obviously each year helps us put that event mm -hmm. on. Um, you know, we we each year also put on our gala. Yes. which is uh, in the spring. Uh, spring Gala is mm -hmm. just a phenomenal event. We, uh, you know, first part of May, so be on the lookout for uh, for that maybe the first or second week of May, May in yeah. 2013. Uh, I can't it's going to be we're saying end. 2013. Yeah. We, 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 we don't stop. I uh -huh. mean, this is, uh, we're going to be at the Intercontinental Hotel, which last year we were at that. Uh, we, we just try to do our part. Uh, in partnership with um, our funders. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide access to those organizations uh, for, for some worthy cause. And it is, I've been to the gala uh, a couple of times and it, it's phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it is just fun, it, it getting to see people mm -hmm. and the, the entertainment is so wonderful. Yeah, you it's guys like, put on a, you all do a good job. Okay. It's like the best wedding without the bride and bride groom. Bride and groom. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh -huh. we, we uh, you know, and I, you know, I would be remiss if uh, I didn't uh, put a plug in for our uh, partner, United Way. We are yes. a federated organization, oh, a federated okay. partner of United Way and, uh, you know, uh, Jewish Federation Catholic Charities and mm -hmm. United Black Fund. So uh, the United Way provides some great services for us, um, funding and support. Um, so we, we uh, do some things in conjunction. Uh, with them, you know, so I'll go around and do some public speaking on their behalf, mm -hmm. uh, and they get behind us. So we, you know, we're we're independent, but you can't be independent. You can't be freestanding and, and freestanding uh -huh. and make the impact that that you would we would have. So our stakeholders, our funders, we are in partnership. Right. We, we're in lockstep for a cause. And that's what I've been working on with our Wake Up and Lives Actors Studio is uh, trying to build our credibility, visibility, so that some of the more established institutions about town won't go, who? You say, you're what? You say, who? <laughs> yeah, but we're fortunate that we work, we, we'll be starting our uh, New You workshops um, later this fall, and if I can plug the agencies that we work with, uh, we've been working, Lester and I um, primarily have been working with Y Haven, which uh, is for transitional men, homeless men who, in many cases are overcoming substance abuse and other issues. We also for a number of years have worked with Dress for Success and these are women overcoming issues and uh, focus on a lot of employment to, uh, to help, them with them, help them with their unemployment, underemployment and help them advance uh, in the careers that they're in. The Fatherhood Initiative yes. and we work with two programs with them and that would be the Passages and the Rising Above and both these programs often have fellows who are coming in from incarceration mm -hmm. and they are learning how to be better parents and inter relate, interact with their families better. Right. And we've got our two youth groups. Well, we had down to one. I'll have to tell you about that. That's a whole <laughs> story. But the Mount, uh, we were working with the Thea Bowman Center uh, of Mount Pleasant and the Murtis Taylor Educational Center out on, you know, Kinsman. And you know, like every agency, you run into glitches with your programming. That's right. I mean, that, that's the very nature of you know existing. So, but we we uh, will be working with them, and we are open to setting up uh, new collaborations. So certainly, you can contact us again too at wakeup4664 at aol.com, and by all means, 
uh, contact the United Black Fund of Greater Cleveland and Cecil. For that matter, when Nadra answers the phone, she Absolutely. can refer you to Cecil. Absolutely. And of course, talking to, to Terry will be a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> so Cecil, right. if you will give us your contact information okay. again. Again, our, our phone number here at the office at UBF is 216-566-9263. Again, that's 216-566-9263. Any and everybody can help you. <clears throat> we, we are a family and, and uh, we, we try to uh, make ourselves available. It's kind of like you, you know, a lot of people say open door policy, but literally we want this to be a place where people feel safe to ask questions that they may not otherwise be mm -hmm. able to ask. You know, the biggest commercial for us <clears throat> is to say that, hey, our organization got funded first by UBF mm -hmm. and now we're going off. We got grants from the Bill Gates Foundation, foundation from yes. the Gun Foundation, from some of the larger foundations because mm -hmm. we uh, uh, kind of walk through mm -hmm. the process with your organization on how to get a grant. It's it's it, no question is is too small or too large, you know. So uh, we welcome uh, you. Some of the organizations that you just named, mm -hmm. we support. Right. We provide the funding for programming within a murder's Taylor, mm -hmm. you know, a large organization. Uh, but but we take ownership of a particular group setting and see that through. You know, because we want to see that impact, right. that critical outcome uh, for people in need. And with that, uh, okay, I'm going to say this. Lester gave us the finger, but it was the right finger <laughs> to let us know that once again, we are just about out of time. And I'm not going to mess it up this time. I'm going to really sign off for this edition of Wake Up and Live with the Arts. Uh, and again, I can't thank Cecil enough and his staff for welcoming us and taking time from his busy afternoon and day schedule because I know if you're head of a nonprofit, things never stop and end. So yes. I've, I've enjoyed your hiatus. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> okay. And thank you. Hopefully we'll get together again soon. And real soon. You took the words out of my mouth. Absolutely. Take it's a care. Pleasure. All right. See ya.